Not everyone aspires to open a record store, but I can tell you since starting this YouTube channel, I have gotten a ton of questions about how I do what I do with NTX Vinyl. So in this new series about how to open a record store, we're gonna kick it off in this episode talking about how to develop a concept, how to test it out and create a brand that will succeed. We will discuss on this episode of Talking About Records. My name is G.I. Sanders from NTX Vinyl, a small chain of independent shops in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. If you're not local but you are in the U.S., you can shop online at ntxvinyl.com and would love it if you'd subscribe to our channel here on YouTube, follow us across social media on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. All right, we are kicking off a new mini-series, if you will, called How to Open a Record Store. This is an idea I have been kicking around for quite a while, and with every question I get, it fuels my passion to want to get it done. So I'm excited to finally kick off episode one, which is going to revolve mostly around concept, uh, testing, and branding. Um, right now, I've got another six or seven episodes. These are gonna be hopefully somewhat brief, hopefully informative. And let me just tell you right up front that I'm still learning. I've only been in this a couple years. Started NTX Vinyl um, in 2019. There are obviously record store owners who have been doing this much longer than I have. But I will say, um, operating a successful record store in 2022, for example, is a lot different than operating a uh, successful record store in, let's say, 1982, right? There's a lot of things that have changed. Uh, obviously, technology has come a long way, and the vinyl industry has evolved immensely over the course of just the last few years. So um, everything that I'm kind of preaching is from my point of view, from my experience, because that's all I can really talk to. I don't know what other record stores uh, do. I don't know what other owners are really, um, you know, invested in and what is important to them. I can take some guesses as you could, but again, these are all firsthand experiences, which is really all I aim to bring to the table here. So if you're wanting to open a record store, the first thing to consider, at least the first thing I consider, and again, what I would, what I would maybe put out there for you as a template is think about the concept. And here's what I mean by that. What type of record store do you want to own? Do you want to be the type of record dealer who um, primarily deals with vintage records and is kind of like a, a step up from a garage sale, right? You go out and you, you dig for records and then you clean those up and you make a profit. Like that's one avenue. Do you want to deal with new releases? Do you want to deal with uh, really high-end collectibles? Like there's a lot of different types of records. There's a lot of different ways to sell those records. And all of that kind of boils down to like what you're looking to get out of this, right? Other than maybe, you know, make money or, or do something you love, right? The kind of table stake stuff. Um, but as far as, you know, conceptually, if you think about your favorite record stores, um, think about what you love about them, what you hate about them, um, what you uh, would improve, what you would change. Those are all the types of things that go into a concept. And I'm not saying that you need to create a business plan and type out this concept, but you at least need to give it some thought. And that's the most important thing because I see a lot of people who sell records online, offline, across the board, and it kind of just ends there. They have records, they put prices on them, they sell them, and that's great. And if you want it to be that type of seller, well, I think you will probably, um, the, the benefits that you get from opening that type of record store or being that type of seller will, uh, will be equal to the amount of effort you've put into it, right? So again, if you, if you, uh, if you wanna think big, if you're thinking about doing this for real, long-term, full-time, whatever, whatever that may be for you, you can start small and maybe grow towards those goals, but that concept is so important. And I think, again, it's just really something that in your head, you have to understand like what your end goal is and what type of shop, what type of seller you wanna be. And obviously that ties back to what you sell and how you sell it and where you sell it. Again, 
A lot of that stuff's going to be in future episodes. Um, you know, as we get into location and inventory, marketing, uh, social media, online presence, uh, creating a team. These are all elements that are going to be in future episodes. But for right now, I think it's so important right from the beginning, if you are thinking about opening a record store um, or you're watching this and maybe you've never had a thought about opening a record store, that concept of who you want to be is so important. Get it dialed in as much as you can. Now, keep in mind, you're going to learn along the way. Um, again, speaking from firsthand experience, I had a concept in mind of what I kind of thought I wanted to do when I started this. And of course it changed. It morphed almost immediately and I chased it wherever, wherever it went, whatever felt good, whatever was productive, whatever kept my attention and my interest and where I could see potential, like the concept morphed, but you've got to have a starting point. And to me, if you're just like, yeah, I'm opening a record store, I'm just going to start selling, I'm going to start selling records. I'm going to start flipping records. Like that's not enough. You've got to have an understanding of a goal uh, short-term goals, long-term goals, and how your kind of concept rolls up to those. Um, and I think that's, again, the starting point is getting your head straight and understanding what you're kind of going after. Once you've established somewhat of a concept, even a loose concept of like, I want to be, you know, eventually I want to own a shop that like has a bar in it and it's really going to be anchored in heavy metal because that's kind of what I love. I might sell some other genres, but that's going to be anchored, what it's going to be anchored. And maybe, maybe there'll be like in stores, which would be cool. Like, that's a concept. You see what I'm getting at? That's an example. Like think big, think long term, establish that goal and then work backwards from that and go, okay, how can I start to inch my way towards that long term vision? You know, and that, that's a big vision, you know, that may take years to get to. Um, so that's very important. The testing of that concept is the next step. And this is, again, speaking from firsthand experience, I had an idea of what I kind of wanted to do. I was thinking I wanted to do something local, very hyper local, um, but I knew I didn't have the ability or even the desire to go lease a space and get into it. So for me, the concept was with small satellite locations. And it's like, that works great in like boutique or antique malls or flea markets, whatever you wanna say, right? So that's one kind of concept. That's the direction I went. But be before I even made that leap, I started testing. And here's what I mean. I watched Facebook groups specifically and YouTube videos and the YouTube community in general in regards to uh, the vinyl community. I did probably, I would say a good year to 18 months of what I'll call research. And what I mean by that is I lived in those communities online and I'd been going to, you know, physical record stores for years, but I'd never really done the online thing. So I took the experience and the knowledge of what I've kind of learned at being in record stores for, you know, more than half my life. Um, and then I started pairing that with, okay, but what's happening right now in the real world as far as how vinyl is working. Again, this is going back to 2017, 2018, as I was building up to kind of making the decision to actually kind of rip the bandaid off and start NTX vinyl. But that testing was very key. So I had to do some research and figure out like where people sell, how people sell, what people buy. And I was testing my concept, even if it was uh, conceptually or subconsciously as I was kind of doing this research to figure out what works and most importantly what was gonna work for me because I would see things in record stores physically or online in a group or a community and I would pick out things that I thought were smart pick out things that I thought man that's a good idea and I, I was jotting some of them down and in, in a note on my phone but more so I was just soaking it in from a knowledge perspective so that when I was ready to you know, start inching my way towards, you know, announcing that I was going to do this publicly, um, I had the ability to test some of those things that I had seen other people do. Um, and again, that had to do with like where to sell, what to sell, how to sell, how to position yourself, again, boiling up to that concept. Um, so that was very key. The other thing I did, um, which was a true test. And this will, this really gets into kind of location, which is the next episode. But the first thing I did was I, I just literally um, created a pop-up event 
and just to test my local market. Cause that was my big question is like, I had no idea if out in the suburbs where I'm at, I'm 30 minutes North of Dallas out in the suburbs. I had no idea if there was enough people around here to support any sort of actual local store. So I was thinking, well, maybe, maybe I'll test it out and see, but my fallback plan was like, well, I know I can sell online. I didn't really want to just do that. I, I my concept was, was based around being hyper local, but the only way to test that was to, to really hit the ground running. And so I, I spent many months pricing records, putting together a pop-up sale and did that in my garage. And, and I've, I've, uh, I've done videos on that. I'll, I'll link to it for sure. So you can see what that looked like. Uh, but that was a big test for me. That was just one of many tests and it helped define that concept and get me kind of on the path of opening a record store, right? So don't be afraid to test, don't be afraid to experiment, but I think it's important to get your feet wet, meaning I don't recommend anyone go out and uh, scout for locations and sign, sign a lease and come up with a, pay, a, pay an agency to create a logo and a brand and all that, and we'll get into branding because that's part of this, um, having never sold a record. Like that's a terrible idea. You've got to test. You've got to go sell some records. You've got to see what this is like. You've got to practice grading. You've got to practice buying and selling and uh, communicating with people because those are all part of the business. And if you're not comfortable with one or many of those elements, you need to think hard about whether or not you can do this on your own or whether or not you're going to have to pull in other people right away, which is a very valid option. A lot of people start businesses with friends and partners and you know things like that because they don't have all of the expertise. Nobody does have all of the expertise to do everything, right? So um, again, establishing a concept is key, even a loose one, and then start to test that concept and see if it works. See if there are strategies that are kind of uh, the underlying support of your concept and see if those actually play out the way you think they are in the real world as far as how you sell, where you sell, what you sell, those types of things, right? The other element that I think is very smart to think about from the, from the beginning, which is why this is in episode one, is branding. Now, a lot of people may not know what that means, but I've been in marketing my whole life, so branding is very familiar to me. And it's essentially the idea of, of again, creating a brand that is um, identifiable, that is recognizable, and in most, uh, most importantly, is inviting to people. I think that's very important. If you're just gonna be Bob's Records and you're gonna throw a bunch of used records out that people are typically see in discount bins or garage sales, like it's probably not a great brand to drive back people to your store time and time again, right? So you've gotta think about a way to stand out, a way to differentiate yourself from other local stores, from online stores. And again, a lot of that goes back to the concept, you know, you're gonna, it's gonna change and it's gonna evolve and it's gonna morph along the way. But if you can set some sort of loose concept, test that concept, learn from the test, and then from there go, okay, I've learned a little bit, I've figured out where I want to go now through, through, through testing this concept. Let's now establish some semblance of a brand so that when we do make an announcement, we look somewhat professional. I'm not saying you need to go, again, pay an agency to come up with some huge branding package because that's a thing. You can go spend a lot of money on that and that's what big companies do. But if you're starting out small, if you're on your own, just like I was, you know, think about how, man, maybe I should develop a logo, how am I going to, going to uh, uh, present that? And uh, what is my uh, color scheme going to look like? Is it going to reflect the, the type of music I'm into and that I will probably sell the most of? Like, that's what a brand is. For me, I just wanted something professional and clean and I wanted it to represent uh, my location, which is North Texas. So that was a no brainer for me, especially because uh, the University of North Texas is nearby, uh, you know, 15 minutes away. And it's a music centric school, believe it or not, one of the most, uh, you know, uh, famous music schools in the world, believe it or not. And uh, so that was my concept it was like hyper local, clean and professional. Um, and that was kind of enough of a brand. And that's really it starting out. Like, are you going to be like, um, I mentioned it again using the example, like are you going to have a shop that really screams like heavy metal or maybe you're a shop that's going to specialize in like pop punk emo, you know, uh, type of stuff or maybe you're more into like hip hop, rap, soul R&B, jazz, like there's lots of different concepts and lots of different brands. Um, 
And what those do is they represent everything else that goes and works below it, right? And so in, in genre and inventory and your interests and your loves and your passions, like that's all gonna roll up to what that brand is. It's not an easy thing and it's not something that you necessarily need to overthink. It's not something that, um, in my opinion, should stop you from trying this. Because again, your brand can change over time too. There's nothing to be nothing to be said that you can't change this. But I would say you should come out of the gate having some semblance of long-term plan and at least give it a shot to establish your brand that you think is going to work for the long term. If you end up having to change it after a year or after five years or whatever, so be it. Um, but go out of the gate with something that looks cool, something that will hopefully entice people. You're a vinyl collector, or I suspect you are, otherwise you're probably, you know, in the wrong business or, or looking at the wrong business to get into, right? But if you're a vinyl collector, you've been into shops. You've been into shops that have great branding. I promise you may not have noticed it, but do they have good signage? Does it look professional? Like what's what thematically, how does it feel when you're in there as far as what you're hearing? Same thing can be said online when you go to a website, when you go to a Facebook group, when you go to a YouTube channel, what's the aesthetic that is presented? Again, using myself as the example, I try to keep consistency in the way that I talk about NTX Vinyl, the way NTX Vinyl looks, um, the way that I create lots of different kind of imagery and graphics that kind of reflect who I am personally because I am the face of this brand. And, and in most cases, when you're a small business owner of any kind, you are the face of that brand. You're the face of that company, like it or not. You can be as visible with, with yourself as you'd like, you don't have to get on a camera and talk to people. That is not a necessity, um, but it certainly does help establish a personal connection with people, which is the reason why I've chosen to do it, um, you know, uh, in case you hadn't noticed. But uh, so again, concept, testing, branding, these are all foundational elements to any business, not just a record store, right? But as I sit back and I think, hey, what did I do, you know, three, four years ago, as I was really starting to go down this path. And these are the things that I was thinking about. And again, I wasn't typing them out in a business plan. You could do that if you're that type of person. I'm just more of a, a thinker to where I'll, I'll jot some notes down and I'll just observe. And over the course, like I mentioned, over the course of a year, year plus, I got to a point where I was pretty confident. like, yeah, this is the way I want to do it. And that's what we're talking about. He's like, how do you want to do this? Because there's a there's a hundred different ways to open a record shop, you know? not, you know, getting into the location and inventory and all those types of things. There's lots of ways to do it and lots of ways to differentiate yourself, differentiate yourself. So the real key is for you to get an understanding of what you want to do, what excites you, what's going to keep you motivated. That's the biggest thing, especially in the early stages. Um, you know, cause again, you're starting out small or most people do. I would recommend that. Um, you want to tiptoe into things and try things out. But the point is, don't get too far ahead of yourself. You know, stay in the moment and appreciate what you're doing at that time and learn from it. That's the biggest thing because you're going to learn so much uh, in the first few months and even the first few years. I'm still to this day figuring things out, um, you know, as I'm sure most small business owners are, you know. So those are the, those are the things I really wanted to preface in this first episode. The next episode we're going to get into is really where, um, really where it get in, gets into the uh, the meat and potatoes of, it, and that is location, not only physically but also online. There's a lot of options there, so stick around for the next episode on this mini series of how to open a record store. If this really, if this topic really interests you, um, and we'll dive deeper on episode two about location. Thanks for watching, as always. Would love to hear your questions, your comments, your feedback. Um, and uh, we will certainly get back to you uh, in response. Feel free to reach out via email as well. If you'd rather do it that way, you can always get me personally at info at We will see you again next time on another episode of Talking About Rec.